In this video, we will show you how to replace your AC condenser on this Ford Flex. This will be located in your engine compartment along the front. Let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get started on replacing our AC condenser. To do that, you want to make sure you have a professional evacuate the refrigerant from inside the air conditioning system. Now that we've evacuated the AC system, I want to make a quick note. You're going to have to remove the radiator to remove the AC condenser. So with that said, make your way up along the top of the coolant reservoir. We're going to feel it and make sure it's cool to the touch. Turn it counterclockwise and remove the cover, lifting it up and away from your face in case there is any pressure. Give this a quick inspection and set it aside. Now we can make our way underneath the driver's side of the radiator. We're going to start draining this. To do that, you want to make sure you're wearing hand and eye protection at all times. Use a 19 millimeter. We'll turn this counterclockwise just enough to let the coolant drain into a collection bucket. Along inside the bumper cover, you're going to find your fog lamp assemblies. You'll have one of these on each corner of the vehicle. Make your way to the electrical connector. Squeeze the locking tab and disconnect it. Once you have it disconnected, just go ahead and give it a quick inspection for corrosion. Set that aside. At this point, you want to do the exact same thing on the other side of the vehicle as well. Once you've disconnected both fog lamp assemblies, continue on along the wheel well. You're going to find that you have a push clip. Use a trim tool or a small prying device. Carefully pull out the center to unlock it, and then you can remove the outer aspect. Now we'll do the same, making our way down along the bottom of the bumper cover. Now you can make your way out from underneath the vehicle and we'll continue on into each one of the wheel wells. In this area, you're going to find that you have three five and a half millimeter screws holding the bumper cover to the inner fender well. Remove all three on this side and then do the exact same thing on the other side of the vehicle. Let's make our way under the hood and remove all of our five and a half millimeter screws that come across the front. Now let's continue a little bit further inboard. You're going to find that you have two 10 millimeter headed bolts. You'll find one on each side. Remove the pair. Continuing further in, you'll find that you have two push clips, one on either side. Remove these by first removing the center and then the outer aspect. So you have that lifted up, that's unlocked. You can fully remove this. We'll just put those two together, make our way to the other one. Go ahead and grab onto that trim panel, lift it up and remove it from the vehicle. We'll set that aside. Now let's start removing the center area of the grill. To do this, we'll use an angled trim tool. Carefully get under this area and gently pry it out of place. Make your way down the line. There we are. We'll have a look at the back side and you can tell that we have several push clips that make their way across and those fit into the front of the vehicle. Now, with that out of the way, if you were to look close to the headlight, still in the grill, you're going to find two more 10 millimeter headed bolts, one on each side. Remove the pair. Now we can take hold of the grill assembly. What you're going to find is on each corner, there's gonna be a push clip. So we'll just carefully get behind this area and gently give it a quick tug. We'll do the same on the other side.
remove the grill. Now looking in the center, along where your hood latch is, you're going to find that you have two more push clips. Do not remove these yet. Make your way to the corner of the bumper cover. Now we can grab onto the bumper cover right here and give this a little tug. We're trying to separate it from the fender. Let's make our way across up along here. Once you have one side separated, do the exact same thing on the other side of the vehicle. Now we can make our way to those center push clips. As you remove these, keep in mind, these are the last things holding the bumper cover to the vehicle. Take hold of the bumper cover and remove it from the vehicle. Now up inside the engine compartment, we're going to start removing the air filter housing and the air inlet tube. To do that, we can use an angled pick and we're going to dislodge the wiring from the air filter housing. Once you have that separated, continue on to the mass airflow sensor. On this mass airflow sensor, along the bottom of it, you're going to find that you have a red locking tab. I'll show you that in one second. We'll just dislodge that, squeeze on the locking tab underneath here and gently pull this out of place. That's the locking tab. And then after that, I squeezed right in this black area. A quick inspection for corrosion and set that aside. Now we can make our way up that air inlet tube. We're going to disconnect this by grabbing onto this little gray lock. We'll give that a little tug and pull this off. You can set this aside. Continue following it up. You're going to find that you have a hose in this area. We'll just gently pry this out of place. Give it a quick squeeze, make sure it is soft and pliable and it's not torn, worn, or damaged. Continue on to your eight millimeter headed clamp that holds the air inlet to your throttle body. With that loose, we can give this a little tug to separate it from the throttle body. Underneath that area, you're going to find that you have two metal clips holding the top area of the air filter housing to the bottom. We'll pop both of those out of place. Go ahead and grab onto this and remove it from the vehicle. Now we can grab onto that air filter, pull it up and out of there. You wanna give it a close inspection. If it looks like it has to be replaced, now's a perfect time to do that. We'll set this aside. Now we can remove this plastic panel. Underneath that, you'll find that you have two eight millimeter headed bolts. Remove the pair. Now we can take hold of the air filter box. We're gonna give it a little wiggle and lift it up and out of here. Follow the upper radiator hose to where it connects onto the radiator. In this area, you're going to find a clamp that you can squeeze with some hose clamp pliers or just some regular pliers. Once we give that a squeeze, we'll pull this hose off of the radiator. Give the end of the hose a quick inspection, make sure it's not torn or worn. If you see any cracks, you're going to want to replace this. Set this aside away from the radiator assembly. Now we can continue on with removing the fan. To do that, we'll start right up here at the hood cable. Just dislodge that. Now we can start dislodging the wiring harnesses from the fan assembly. We'll use a trim tool or a small prying device. Carefully get in between this area and gently separate it. Now as we move up along this area, you'll find that you have two clips. For these clips, you can use some pliers, squeeze in on the two ears, and gently pull this out of place.
Now there is one more wire connector down along here, but we're going to pause in this area, make our way up the fan shroud, and you're going to find on each side of it you have an 8mm headed mounting bolt. Remove the pair. Now we can take hold of the fan assembly. We're going to give this a little tug straight up, start pulling it away diagonally, and start lifting it up to where we can gain access to our lower mounting point for the wiring harness and also the wire connector. Be careful for your hood release cable. Let's use our trim tool to remove that. Got another one right here. Now we can start removing our wire connector. The process for removing this will be the same as the other side. Right in the center where my thumb is, there's a small tab you can squeeze and gently pull this out of place. A quick check for corrosion. Make your way to the other side of the fan shroud. Now you can remove your fan assembly. Follow the radiator down to where it connects onto the lower radiator hose. On this, you'll find that you have another clamp. Go ahead and give that a quick squeeze with some pliers. Rotate the hose around and remove the hose from the lower aspect of the radiator. We'll check that one in the same way. Make sure it's soft and pliable and not torn or worn. Set that aside. Once you have that off, continue on to tightening the drain. We'll snug this up so the radiator does not continue leaking out. Now we're going to move along the outside area here. Just along where your headlamp assembly is, you're going to find that you have two locking tabs that protrude from the inside outward. Down along the bottom is where that lock is. So what you need to do is come underneath this area, gently pry this up a little bit, and while you're doing that, we'll make our way inside the engine compartment and remove this locking clip. We'll use our angled pick for this. Come right in this area and gently pry this out of place. At this point, you can reach in here and remove that locking clip. Once you have that out of place, continue on, do the same thing on the other side of the vehicle. With both of those clips out of there, we can maneuver around the radiator and the AC condenser at the same time. The next thing you want to do is remove the two bolts that hold the AC condenser to the radiator. On the driver's side, you'll find that it's an 8mm headed bolt. Over on the passenger side, it will be a 10mm headed bolt. Remove the pair. To access the passenger side bolt, We'll be using our trim tool. Come up along this area and remove this. Now we can have a look inside here. Use our 10 millimeter on this one. Now that we have that loose, we can remove the 10 millimeter headed bolt. There it is. Now we can grab onto this unit right across here, and we're going to pull it out of place. Up along the top, you'll find that there's a small hook. You can gently pry that. Just down below it, there's another hook that wraps around the AC condenser. Go ahead and give that a little tug, separate it, and you can swing it down and out of the way. Now with this swung down, we're going to continue down along the bottom of it. You'll find a push clip. Carefully make your way in between this trim panel and separate that push clip. Let's use my trim tool. Pry that out of place. A quick inspection and you can set this aside. Now with that out of the way, let's have a look at where the AC condenser connects to the radiator. You're going to find that you have a small hook on the radiator that holds the condenser in place. Go ahead and tip that radiator and AC condenser and lift up on the condenser itself. 
slide it away from the hook so it's dislodged, and then do the same on the other side of the vehicle. Tug on that radiator a little bit and lift this up and out. Now let's reach up inside here. We're going to start removing the radiator. As you do so, be extremely careful for your hood release cable. Got a little bit of coolant in there still. Just let that drain. It's important to make sure that you take a peek down along the bottom. It's common to find that you still have your rubber mounts located along this area. Have a look at both sides. If they're on there, go ahead and take them off of the radiator. Now we can set our radiator aside. Now with the radiator out of the way, we have a nice clear view of our transmission cooler lines on the driver's side of the AC condenser. Now before we start removing these, it's important to note that there is transmission fluid inside of these lines. So make sure you have a collection bucket under the area. To remove the lines, go ahead and squeeze on the clamp and gently pull the hose out of place. Once you've done one, do the same to the other. Go ahead and give that hose a quick squeeze. Make sure it's soft and pliable. There we are. Move over towards the passenger side of the AC condenser. You're going to find where you have the upper AC line going into it. To remove this line, we're going to use a 13 millimeter socket. Now before we do so, it's important to mention once again, you never want to open up the AC system unless you have properly evacuated the AC system. Take hold of that line, give it a little wiggle, and separate it from the AC condenser. You can set this aside. Now you can make your way down along the front of the AC condenser. Remove this mounting nut and this line as well. It's common for the stud to come out. That's okay. We'll set this aside. Take hold of that line and separate it from the AC condenser. At this point, we can continue on to removing the AC condenser from the vehicle. There it is, friends. Now we're going to continue on with the seals on each one of the lines. The process will be the same exact thing. Remove the O-ring. For this, we'll just use a small pick and gently pull it off. Once you have that off of there, we're going to continue on with the other seal. For this one, you can use a pick or a small screwdriver and just gently pry it off of the line. The next thing we'll do is clean down the area. You wanna make sure there's no dirt or debris. The next thing you'll want to do is have some PAG oil handy. We need to lubricate the seal. Just put a little bit on a gloved finger and put it all along the rubber aspect of each one of the seals. We have this one right here, and then of course the rubber O-ring. Now we can place the seals on the line. Double check to make sure they're both completely seated. Once you've done one of the lines, do the exact same thing to the other line. All right, friends, now we can prepare to install our brand new AC condenser. On the AC condenser, you're going to find that on each of the ports, it has a little plug, and the plug is held in place with a 13 millimeter bolt. Now, something I wanna mention is as you're removing this and the plug comes loose, it is possible that there's pressure inside of the AC condenser, so be prepared for that. Now, once we have that out of there, we're going to continue on with our stud. For this, we're going to start it in by hand, so you're sure you do not cross-thread it into place. 
Once you feel as though it's bottomed out, use a five millimeter socket along the end here and make sure it's nice and snug. Right there feels as though it's pretty much bottomed out. We'll just take it a tiny bit further, double check to make sure that's secure. Now, once you've done this, do the same exact thing to the other port. Now that we have that out of the way, let's continue on with that stud as well. Once again, starting it in by hand and snugging it with that five millimeter socket. Now that we have both of those studs in there, it's important to add one ounce of PAG oil to the AC condenser before you continue installation. Put this right down into this port. We're allowing it to come down and through here and make its way into the condenser. All right, let's get ready to install this AC condenser in the vehicle. As we bring it down into place, be extremely careful for the cooling fins. Now, once you have it down in the proper positioning, we'll continue on with the lines. Go ahead and take that and slide it right in up against the AC condenser. With that pressed in place, continue on with your 13 millimeter headed mounting nut, snug it up and torque it to 133 inch pounds. We'll just double check to make sure that's completely secured and do the same to the other line. Just double check that line as well. Let's make our way over towards the driver's side of the AC condenser and we're going to reconnect the transmission cooler lines. You want to make sure you press these all the way in. Once you have it in the proper position, continue on with the clamp to hold it in place. When you're putting the clamp in place, you want to make sure that you still have a little bit of the hose exposed on this end. But the clamp does need to be up on this area of the transmission cooler as well. So as you can tell, that hose is sitting perfectly. Release the clamp. Do the same to the other hose. Double check both of your hoses and make sure they are secure. Before you install your radiator, it's important to make sure you reinstall your rubber mounts. We'll double check on both sides to make sure they are in place. Now we can get ready to install the radiator. Make sure that the two little pins coming out the bottom of the radiator fit into those rubber mounts. Let's bring this down into place. Press that down into position, give it a wiggle to make sure it's secured along the bottom. Now the next thing we want to do is start aligning the AC condenser with the radiator. The AC condenser along the bottom will have two tabs, one on each side that protrude out towards the side, and on the radiator, you remember that there was those small hooks along the bottom. Lift up on the AC condenser and align it with the hook on the radiator. Once you have one side aligned, do the same to the other side, and then you can press it down into the locked position. Now we'll continue on to our two mounting bolts. You remember as we had removed these, we had the 10 millimeter on the passenger side of the vehicle and the eight millimeter headed bolt towards the driver's side of the vehicle. We'll start them in and snug them up. Double check to make sure everything's secure. Slide this back into position. We'll get the bottom push pin aligned. There we are. Let's swing this up over here. Looking in the center, 
there's an area that goes around the AC condenser, and as you follow this up, there's a small hook that goes up and over the AC condenser. So we'll just try to get everything aligned. There we are. Get that little side hook in place as well. Now we can move up to the top, align that push pin with a corresponding hole, and press it in. Now we can continue on to our two locking clips. What we need to do is put this in position over the tab along the top of the radiator. Slide it right in through the rubber hole here. You can wiggle the radiator around as needed. We'll do the same to the other side real quick. Now once you have both of those aligned, take hold of the radiator assembly and press it forward. What we're paying attention to is these two locking tabs. Make sure that they are both locked in position. Do the same on the other side. Now let's make our way to that lower radiator hose. Use your hose clamp pliers to squeeze the clamp and then we'll put the hose in place on the radiator. Let's get that clamp properly aligned. Double check to make sure that the hose is secured to the radiator. Now that we have the hose on there, let's look just below it at that drain. We'll use our 19 millimeter wrench to make sure that the drain plug is tight. Keep in mind, it is only plastic and we don't need to strip it. Right there feels as though it bottomed out. Let's give it a little bit more. Now we can prepare to put in our cooling fan assembly. Before we slide it down in here, I want to show you along the radiator. On the rear of the radiator, you're going to have two hooks, one on either side. The one on the driver's side will be towards the center of the radiator, and the one over towards the passenger will be down along the bottom corner. On the fan itself, you have two tabs that protrude out. Those need to line up into those two hooks. Once you feel as though you have that in place, start in each of your 8mm headed mounting bolts and then snug them up. Now we can also start this one in. We'll snug this up and then make our way back over there and tighten the other one. Now that that one's snug, let's make our way back over here. Now after we have both of those bolts tight, let's make our way back up here and just lock this in position as well. Move along to the wiring harness. Along the driver's side, we'll start with the fan. Put this in position. Listen for a click, give it a tug to make sure that's secure. Now we'll continue on with securing the rest of the wiring harness. Press that in. We can make our way around. There we go. Move up here. Now we can make our way up along here. The next two clips, clip in along the top. We'll follow this wire once again down along the fan shroud, pressing it into position. As we make our way down, we'll also connect in the fan blade. Listen for a click, give it a tug. Just double check the wire to make sure it is still secured. It's possible that maybe it pops out of position. Now we can reattach that upper radiator hose to the radiator. Squeeze the clamp, slide the hose into position, release the clamp. Now that the upper hose is reattached, let's connect it in along the top of the fan. Now we can put in the lower air filter box. Looking at this, you can tell you have two tabs that protrude out from the bottom. And down inside the engine compartment, you'll have two rubber grommets for them to slide into. Let's get this aligned and slide it down into place. Start in each of those two mounting bolts, snug them up. Install the cover that goes over this area. On the bottom you have two tabs, 
they fit into their corresponding slots. Install your air filter. Now we can move along to the upper air filter housing and air inlet tube. When you go to install this, you want to make sure you have your three mounting tabs aligned with the corresponding slots in the lower housing. Now we'll align the air inlet tube with the throttle body. Bring this down into place. You want to make sure you press this all the way up against the throttle body and tighten that 8 millimeter headed clamp so no dirty or unmetered air makes its way into the engine. Press the box down as far as you can and lock it in with your two locking tabs. Now we can reconnect the mass airflow sensor. Once you press it in, you want to make sure you lock it in with the red locking tab. Just go ahead and press that all the way inward. Feels like it's secure. I'll lock it in. Resecure the wiring harness to the corner of the air filter housing. Let's follow that air inlet tube, reconnect this line, give it a click, give it a tug, make sure that's secure. We'll continue following it up, reconnect this hose, press it in, make sure that's secure. Okay, let's put on our bumper cover. Carefully put this in place. Along the top, we're going to hold this in place with two of our push clips. To do this, we'll press in the outer aspect and then lock them in with the center. Now we can make our way towards each one of the fenders. We'll start on one side. I'm just going to press this right in. Listen for a click. Once you have the bumper cover pressed into place, start in all three of your five and a half millimeter mounting screws. Then snug them up. With all of those tight, we'll continue on with our push clip. Now that I've completed one side of the wheel well, we'll make our way over to the other side of the vehicle and do the same thing. Once you have your bumper covers secured to your fender liners, continue on underneath the vehicle. We're going to reconnect our fog lamp assemblies. Listen for a click, give it a tug, do the same on both sides of the vehicle. Put in your push clips along the bottom of the bumper cover. All right, let's get ready to install that grill assembly on the vehicle. Take this and put it in position. Once you feel as though it's properly aligned, press it into place. Continue on with your two 10 millimeter headed bolts that hold the grill assembly to the body of the vehicle. Now we can put on the forward trim piece. Keep in mind you have several push clips making their way across that need to fit into their corresponding slots on the vehicle. Get that aligned and press it in. Let's move along to the upper trim piece. We'll get that in position. On this, you'll find that you have two 10 millimeter headed bolts, one on either side of it. Start those in and snug them up. Along the front, you'll have eight of these five and a half millimeter mounting screws. Start them in, snug them up.
Now we can put in our last two push clips. Now we can make our way back over to that coolant reservoir. We're going to start filling the cooling system. If you were to look along the side of the reservoir area here, you'll find that you have a level. In the end, when this is full, you want to be someplace inside of this leveled area. So what we'll do is we'll use a funnel. We'll start adding some coolant. After you've added plenty of coolant inside of the reservoir, you're going to want to start up the vehicle, let it run for a little while, and get up to normal operating temperature. While it's running, pay attention in this area. As air is burping its way out, the coolant will be making its way down, so you will have to keep topping it off. It does not need to be filled all the way up to the top, only inside of that lined area. The coolant that you should use is Motorcraft's Specialty Orange Coolant. You can also use Universal Coolant if needed. Alright, so once you're sure that the cooling system is filled up to the proper level, reinstall your coolant cap. Tighten it up, listen for a click so you know it's secure. At this point, you want to make sure that you have a professional fill up your AC system with the proper amount of refrigerant. Double check to make sure it has the caps on the ports. After that, you can go ahead and clean up your mess and take your vehicle for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.